Well, hey there, Nisha, and welcome to the Corporate Metaverse. So happy to have you here. Hi, Corey. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for having us here. What we'd like to do right now is to dig deeper into the corporate and enterprise use cases of the Metaverse. I know we had Ronit on before, and he spoke about what is the Metaverse, the key takeaways from the Metaverse, and the TAM, and why everyone's excited about it. But right now, we'd like to really focus on the corporate and enterprise use cases along with Corey, and sort of deconstruct a bit of how things are evolving in the space. Yeah, and you know what's cool, Nisha, is you're in London right now. I'm in Aarhus, Denmark, but yet here we are together in a virtual representation of a training environment in the corporate metaverse. And isn't that exciting? Absolutely. I mean, we're all remotely distributed in our living rooms, but today we are in this shared spatial space where we collaborate, work, and build together. This is exciting. Let's go have a closer look. Fantastic. So, Nisha, what you're looking at here is a 3D model of a cross-section of a wind turbine process. So, yeah, you get close. I mean, look at these models over here of the actual platform. I mean, like the level of detail is absolutely amazing. But what you want to do here is you want to give your employees the big picture of how your products, how your services work in a real-world setting. So what this does is it shows, for example, like how these wind turbines, how they're moored to the seabed, how the cables run through the bottom of the ocean bed, and how they go through these different generating plants to where they actually come all the way over here. And I'm going to move over here to this side of the model to where that power that's generated offshore, how it comes all the way back and how it impacts uh, people when they live in their houses. Now, imagine trying to explain this to a new employee in a classroom setting or try to, trying to explain this in a Zoom setting. It's nearly impossible, but here we're able to give people the big picture in just a matter of a few seconds. I could have really used this when I was doing my engineering and I had to learn about the civil stuff and it was just so hard to visualize these complex 3D models. I think immersive 3D visualization is definitely the future of education. I mean, a picture is worth a thousand words, but I think a 3D image is probably worth a thousand pictures. It's very, very exciting to see this. So, Nisha, what you're looking at here is a nacelle wind turbine motor. It's scaled down 80%, but in real life, this is a 300-ton motor, which would be really difficult to move around and to move into different training spaces. What you also wouldn't get in a real-life setting is a rotating motor head. Obviously, there's a danger risk there. Neither would you be able to see how all the cogs work together and how they function to generate power. So what this does is this allows us to use kind of like a digital twin, a digital copy, if you will, to kind of scale the impossible, but do so without any risk. This is amazing. Uh, the whole concept of creating twins of uh, digital objects, especially such complex ones, and to be able to get into, get into these, get very close to these, and learn how they operate. I think the future of this in medicine, in surgery, in smart manufacturing, it's just like people have just started scratching the surface. So, Nisha, what you're looking at here are some of the key components that we want to spotlight that we saw in the first model. Now, that model was great in showing things in you know, a really big picture. But sometimes you may want to you know, focus on, on individual components, and that's what we've done here. So, for example, we've got the wind you know, offshore wind turbines. And behind that, you basically just got a document that kind of unfolds and explains how these offshore, offshore wind turbines work. But what you're also able to see here is that there is a flow. So we're able to spotlight, for example, the wind turbines and how they connect with the offshore, offshore substations. But again, what you're able to do is just dig a little bit deeper into each component. And I think that's, again, that's one of the, one of the exciting things about, the, about virtual reality and being able to train and onboard uh, and employees like this. Yeah, and what's super exciting for me is also that this is a persistent world, right? This room's not going to disappear if we leave this physically. And you could visualize that corporates with their employees, even their suppliers and clients are able to co-create and collaborate in, in a virtual workspace and sort of re keep revisiting and rebuilding on what they've done. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and also bear in mind that, you know, a lot of people may be thinking, wow, it must be really difficult to create all of these animated 3G objects. But most, if not all, production and manufacturing companies already have their products in 3D. They already have the schematics, they have the documents, they have the videos, and they have the, the slide decks to basically recreate this entire space that we've already created. 
Another thing to bear in mind is that we, we talk about you know NFTs and things like that. Each one of these 3D objects could very well be an NFT, and I could easily just press on them and then buy that with some type of cryptocurrency. So this could be a digital showroom of the future where I can come in and I can buy different types of products. I'm not saying that it is, and I'm saying that we obviously have a long way to go, but this is a sign that at least we're headed in that direction. Absolutely. And with each object, it encapsulates its own digital property rights, theoretically. So like you said, there could be a marketplace just for these 3D digital objects with everyone building and, you know, composing on top of each other in a permissionless and open and decentralized way as well. But I mean, as you take a look around this entire VR training experience, this is normally an experience that takes anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. We guide people through the the cross section. We show them the big turbine. We show them the, the flow of the different components. We also have step-by-step -step guides. And then we have a play area where we show people how they can easily you know, add different types of content, scale them up, move them around. But uh, this is the future of VR training, onboarding, and upscaling. And we're super excited to be able to show it and share it with you guys today. Exciting. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. It's been fascinating.